Hello everybody. It is April 7. It's a week into April. Oh, what's tomorrow? The big day. April 8th. The eclipse. The eclipse earthquake. The eclipse that is going to turn on CERN. The eclipse that's going to take down the grid. The eclipse that's going to crack open the new Madrid fault line. The eclipse that you better have cash because when that grid goes down, well, cash is going to be handy. Uh, biological attack. Uh, what else? Terrorist attacks. Did I cover that yesterday? Maybe it's open for tonight. Yes, they're claiming, watch out, crowds, gathering. We could have a terrorist attack. Big day tomorrow. Will it be big news? You're going to have to wait until tomorrow, I guess. So I hope you're all doing well. Lindy London, Alicia, and Christy. Hello, Rage Against the Machine. Hello. And awakened. you've awakened. Coming into the chat. Nice to see you. Andrew Cruz. Deacon Blues, Super Painting 62, Barb in Ohio, hello, Sherry Hughes, as always, I thank you very much. And I hope everybody is going over to Sherry Hughes's new channel that's very different from my channel, and it might put smiles on your face. Yes, I think it will. So check out Sherry's new channel, Sherry. You've got a post the link so I can see it, so I can click on it. Let's see, T. Lamb, thank you very much. Nice to see you. Justin Wynn, Tom, Oracle 11, Louisiana Skywatch, Denise Martinez, The Hypocrite's Matrix, Space Indian, and Awakened Sleeper. Hi. Kim Blanchard, James Brandenburg, Crazy Potts, and and, and, and Maria Orsic, hello. Patricia White, hello. And Agnes, hello. Marcel, it's already April 8th, 12 p.m. in New Zealand. So far, everything has changed. I think uh, the eclipse ain't going over to you guys. I think it's just special for Americans. You know how special we are. Pathologic. Gus Maximus. Hello, the Michiganda. Michiganda. Laura Larson, hello. Well, if... Maria, if you're in the totality, they're canceling school tomorrow for it. Ah, uh, yes. Ah, uh, yes. Maintain smooth streaming. Silent walk, hello. Wait, wait, don't tell me. Oh, wait, what? Wait, what? <laughs> yes. Tiniest, calmest, pity puppy grows up to be a wild man. Golden Retriever meets new puppy. Husky yells at staff and wins a puppuccino. How cool. All right. Oh. It hurts when I see German Shepherds. It hurts. But I love them. So, I'm going to post the link as well. It's a 
a sane distraction, certainly from watching two hours of me BMCC Demore and Sababinor. Hello, Connie. Hello. All right, so uh, we have quite a lot of weather, which I'm surprised. I have said that YouTube sucks in terms of finding information, but I'll do my flooding searches every day. And lo and behold, I am finding flooding in our country that I didn't even know about that happened like four or five days ago. I'll show it to you, but first let's take a look at radar. Here they come. The supercell train. You like how defined is that line right here? It actually extends if you look very carefully closely. Got the supercells, Tennessee and Arkansas, Louisiana, Texas, into Illinois and Indiana and hopefully they'll give Ohio a break. This has been, I look, does anybody remember Storm starting in Texas, wrapping around several states, and then heading back west? I don't. I don't. Okay, so. Cars submerged in water. Cincinnati. Not exactly sure what has happened here, but boy, that is nasty. Uh, certainly hope that you aren't one of those homeowners. You can clearly see, uh, should I say one of those, one of those car owners there. We're going to send it out to Lindsay Stone. She is actually live, I believe, in the Columbia Tusculum community. Lindsay, can you hear me? Yeah, Kevin, I can hear you. We've just been on the scene here for a few minutes. I just spoke to a couple of neighbors who live in this complex. They say, sadly, this has happened several times before, and it's all because of a sewer issue that blew the cap off of that. And you can see just so much damage here. Multiple cars completely submerged. At first, when we pulled up, there was some concerns that there might actually be someone trapped in that black BMW they can see is almost fully submerged in the water. Thankfully, we don't believe there's anyone in any of these cars. Uh, 911, of course, has been called. We're still waiting on emergency services to get here and everyone just right now staying very clear of the water. This can be a really dangerous situation because you're not sure, of course, what's in that water. So it can be really dangerous. So right now, just tons of neighbors kind of congregating here and watching all of this. Right now, I can only count about three vehicles who are submerged in this water. You can see, though, the damage. All of these townhomes and apartment complex all here, you know, dealing with this damage that we're seeing. So, um, Oh boy. Anybody know about that? I didn't until just a little while ago. Um, somebody asked the website, the radar website, that they were asking about. I'm going to guess that's what it was. I'll put the link in. I have recommended that you bookmark this site. You go to this site several times a day because when they want to create these um, supercells, they do. Whenever they so choose. So when you check it out a couple of times a day and you see a supercell heading your way, be prepared for anything, tornadic activity, thunderstorms, hail, um, high winds, flooding. So I guess the, 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 the drainage is just not working, not just in our country, it seems to be not working everywhere in the world. Isn't that strange? Here, this is uh, 
Columbus, Ohio. The rain from this morning has created some very hazardous roadways and some flash flooding out there. It has been an issue all across central Ohio. And Matthew Herchick is joining us live downtown with what he has been seeing today. Matthew. Monica, good morning. You heard Brian just mention the rising water levels here at the Scioto River. And just behind me, you can see how quickly they've been rising uh, throughout the morning. You can see that walkway is completely covered with water just off to the right as we make our way down. You can uh, see that fence lining. You can see where the uh, walkway starts to reappear. But you can see those high flood levels. And uh, it was just under this bridge that Columbus first responders had to actually rescue two people people from these rising waters. Take a look at this video from about nine o'clock this morning. This is again just under the Broad Street Bridge where we're standing right now. Columbus police tell us that a homeless couple was sleeping under the bridge when water levels quickly rose on them. Now a dozen or more first responders waited until Columbus Fire was finally able to get a boat into the water. Wow. Did anyone know about this kind of flooding in, in Ohio? This was uh, four days ago, five days ago. This five days ago, the flooding in the, of the apartment complex. I have been saying for quite a long time that so much could be happening in your state, in the county next to you, hell, even in your county, and you don't know that it's taking place. Isn't that strange? Ohio has been getting its butt kicked for sure. I knew about the tornadoes but I didn't know about this kind of flooding. All right, so how about South Africa? crackles with tension as the relentless winds lash the western cape of South Africa. In the face of such raw, unbridled power, the resilience of the local communities is pushed to the absolute limit. It was on the fateful day of April 7, 2024, that a savage storm system swept across the Western Cape, its winds reaching a staggering 75 miles per hour. Fueled by a deep, low-pressure system, this tempest unleashed a torrent of heavy rainfall, hail and gusts so powerful that they toppled towering trees, tore roofs from buildings, and left thousands of homes plunged into darkness as the power grid buckled under the strain. The relentless winds have inflicted devastating damage on the region's infrastructure and essential services. Roads have been rendered impassable, blocked by fallen debris and uprooted vegetation, causing widespread disruption to transportation. Widespread disruption to transportation. All over the world. Lots of destruction for South Africa and cars flipping over. That was quite the fall. I hope it was just somebody um, 
that had a trailer in the back of the car and nobody was in it. Russia. Dam break. I'm going to show you some videos of this dam break. Get ready for dam breaks in our country. Frankly, I think that's why they were built. Just to break. So apparently this was the worst flooding in decades. This is Kazakhstan. Kazakh authorities have declared a state of emergency in nine regions of the country due to floods. More than half of the republic's territory has already been flooded. Kazakhstan. The Kazakh authorities have declared a state of emergency in nine regions of the country due to floods. More than half of the republic. Russia. Rescue operations are underway since a dam burst on Friday in Russia's Orenburg region near the Kazakh border. Within a few hours, water rose by four meters in certain areas. The ground floor was flooded in the nine-story apartment building there. The water went onto the ground floor. I want to sob, not just cry. I feel terrible. No casualties have been reported, but a federal emergency has been declared, and over 4,500 people, including hundreds of children, have been evacuated so far. People are being evacuated using watercrafts, inflatable boats, and transporters that can accommodate up to 50 people. This evacuation is being carried out gradually, street by street, and people are also being notified through loudspeakers. Authorities say the dam was built to resist the river's usual level of 5.5 meters. Due to torrential rains and melting ice, water levels doubled, which could have caused the dam to partially collapse. Russian authorities opened a criminal investigation into the cause of the dam burst, and until this breach is fixed, there's no end in sight. The flood situation remains critical. The water is coming, and in the coming days, its level will only rise. The power outages will continue, and if that happens, it means you must evacuate immediately. Neighboring Kazakhstan has also been affected by the floods, with President Tokayev saying they were one of the country's worst natural disasters in the last 80 years. That is pretty intense flooding. The floods, with President Tokayev saying they were one of the country's worst natural My God. Well, good old Australia. Sydney, Australia. Flooding again. 150 people have been rescued after floods in northern Sydney. Other residents have been told to be prepared to flee their homes because of the rising flood waters. The area's main reservoir, which supplies most of the city's drinking water, has started to overflow. You can see that there. There's been three days of torrential rainfall across eastern Australia. People living in parts of New South Wales have been told to stay indoors. It's important to note that flood levels in some of the rivers, particularly in Western Sydney, are continuing to rise and that presents a real danger for some communities. So it's very important for those who live in communities that are low-lying flood-prone areas that you continue to listen to emergency broadcasts from the SES. Well, let's speak to our Sydney correspondent, Phil Mercer. Phil, uh, what, where do things stand right now?
man's body was found in floodwaters in western parts of Sydney. Now the, now, the police here say that they don't know the circumstances of the second fatality, but safe to say it has been a, a wild few days in eastern Australia. Record-breaking amounts of rain have fallen here in the state of New South Wales. Across one 24-hour period, a month's worth of rain fell. So at the moment, there, have stu- there are still evacuation orders in place in parts of Sydney. But um, thankfully for the five million or so residents of this city, this storm system is moving south and it is expected to uh, head out to sea over the Well, I don't think the people affected by the flooding and the evacuations are too grateful. 18 months. Safe at last. An elderly man who was stranded on the roof of his car near Richmond for several hours after being caught by rising floodwaters. SES to the rescue this morning, bringing him to safety, shaken but well. It's an all too common event. The SES has performed almost 200 rescues. Many have been people who'd driven into floodwaters against all the advice. There's been a lot of vision about uh, people being on the roofs of their cars and some really dangerous situations where my SES uh, volunteers have been placed in danger. Two people also escaped injury when their car skidded off a flooded road at Freeman's Reach last night. The driver managed to get out. SES crews and police helped the passenger. They were assessed and given the all clear. Despite a day of sunshine yesterday, 20 evacuation orders were issued overnight mainly for towns along the Hawkesbury River from Richmond to Pitt Town, keeping the SES busy. They have performed nearly 5,000 task jobs. That's a range of things, from fixing people's roofs to making rescues to supporting community to knocking on doors to making sure that the job gets done. I can't even stand listening to government officials, especially these people who, as far as I'm concerned, they, they know, they know about weather modification. Okay. If I have any Aussies left watching the, uh, live, the link is in it's in the chat. Here, this is Scotland. Hi, uh, Beast. I hope you can see that. I'm filming it from my kitchen window. Right, you've got um, Lichfield Cathedral just off the tree line. And you've got a partial rainbow coming down right on the cathedral. Now, the last time this happened, and I did, I did take photographs, actually, and I've still got them because it was so unusual. The last time it happened was at the very start of 2020, when the con happened, when a palpable darkness came over. And that was the last time. Now, I don't know whether it's significant, but I um, I spent a lot of time walking around Lichfield, and that's only the second time. I say it's uh, anything out of the ordinary, but I'm saying it's quite rare. Because in the time I've been in Lichfield, I've only seen it twice. And the last time I saw it, like I say, tended to be, uh, it was at a significant point. It was when everything changed. So I'll leave that with you. God bless. You see it, it pulsating? Did you see it grow? Ah, the wonders of technology and what they can do with it. This is the Arizona sky. Uh, pretty much every every evening after the live, I'll go out and this is what it looks like. Almost every evening. Not natural. Not natural at all. Our atmosphere has been so overwhelmed with toxicity and that's what you're looking at but it is so magnificently bright 
In fact, this was a couple of nights ago. Yeah. Oh, it's a beautiful sunset. Oh my God. Not. <laughs> it almost looks like it's growing black hair. That's the black carbon dust. It's a whole mixture of the aluminum, the barium, the strontium, the lithium, uh, the black carbon dust, and the list is long. You would think that people would be screaming, what the hell is going on with the sky? But nope. We've got a lot of walking dead people in our country now. Beautiful, isn't it? That's sarcasm. I hate even saying, don't you love it, or beautiful, isn't it? Because it's so not. It is so not at all. Not at all. Ugh. So this was uh, a sunrise but about 20 minutes earlier I looked out the window I was still in bed and I just couldn't get up but 20 minutes earlier there was a hot pink a hot pink uh, like half circle in the sky So, when you look at this and you think about how unwell Americans are now, the unwellness can be caused just by this, what they're doing, the spraying of our atmosphere. All right, I am not happy with this at all can't even bring up my own videos. This, this is pissing me off. Yes, it is. <sighs> All right, well, maybe I can get back to it. Oh, thank you. Thank you, computer. Thank you, Microsoft for finally working. And yeah, you can actually, if you have the patience, which I don't have anymore, but you can watch the trail, which a whole lot of these trails are not chemtrails, they're nanobot trails, and you can watch them. They manifest cloud and the cloud grows. It just grows like here. It's growing from the top. Isn't that amazing? And you have the black carbon dust in the cloud. And what? I guess people call... No, I don't want to do that. Um, popcorn clouds or something? Oh, this was, a, I was filming the amount of jets that fly over in the sky five, six, seven, eight times a day. Yeah, one a couple of days ago was so low and so intensely loud, it was scary. And then I think about all of the people subjected to the U.S. military all over the world listening to that. And I, maybe it's a 
Southern Arizona thing that, wow, there is a Air Force base somewhere close, but that costs a lot of money sending up these sonic jets that rip apart the ozone layer, by the way. Oh, it wasn't because you had sprayed deodorant. How come nobody talks about what the military is doing to the environment? Hmm. And I turned off the, uh, only because it's a, it's a song and I'm afraid I'd get a copyright strike, but what the hell? So, uh, what, this is the fire retardant? I'm not really seeing any fire. But wow, I wouldn't want to be living under that. Container ship reportedly lost power in New York City Harbor right before the Verrazano Narrows Bridge. You, look, I have a height thing. Don't know where I got it, but I do. And the, of all of the bridges in New York, getting into New York from all sides, it's the, it's this bridge that I'm like, I don't like driving it. It's so long and I always feel unsettled driving that bridge. So when I saw this, can you, you guys in New York, New Jersey, anybody who knows the Verrazano, this is it. Wow, if they took that down, that would be pretty intense. So the ship is registered to Malta, owned and operated by the large French shipping company, but it lost power, uh, but it did regain its power. And it, what's going on? Hmm, I have a lot of container ships that are losing their power. A New York tugboat captain reported the container ship lost power while transiting, transiting New York Harbor. They had three escort tugs, but three more were needed to bring her under control. They regained power and were brought to anchor near the Verrazano Narrows Bridge. Do I have any New Yorkers in, in the chat tonight? Another Boeing problem? Another Boeing problem. 737 Southwest Airlines had to make an emergency landing after parts of the engine detaches. <laughs> detaches? Okay. Well. All right, let's go ahead and declare an emergency for Southwest 3695, and uh, we'd like uh, an immediately turn. We got a piece of the uh, engine cowling hanging off, apparently. Southwest 3695, roger that. Turn left, heading 190, to the Denver via radar vector. Left turn, heading 190, Southwest 3695. It's a very, very interesting experience now. This was a flight departing from Denver, bound for Houston, experienced an incident during takeoff. We'll get back to this 
whatever he is. All right. We've been having acid attacks. And this one on Long Island. And I have to wonder if if the criminals have seen maybe TikTok videos of the acid attacks in the UK and they brought them over here. Because this, I don't recall ever hearing about acid attacks until the very recent years. It's been nearly three years since a Long Island woman was attacked with acid in front of her home. And that woman spoke today as the search continues for her attacker. News for Gabby Acevedo, live in Elmont. Gabby. David Nafia. Ikram, filled with courage and emotion, spoke to us, standing next to her parents, demanding justice and asking for people not to forget that the person who hurt Nafia is still out there. 24-year-old Nafia Ikram is relentless. You have to show up for yourself, even on the bad days, because that's when it really counts. Standing tall with scars on her face through pain and struggles, recovering from an acid attack outside of her home in Elmont in 2021. Surveillance video captured the moment when someone stalked, then threw sulfuric acid in her face. I feel like um, the investigation is exactly where it was on March 17th of 2021. That's exactly how I feel. The attacker has never been captured. Nafia can't forget the past, but it's also focusing on the positive, talking about her medical progress. They're going to have to reconstruct my eyelid again over here. So I'm having surgery about sometime next month. Looking at her injuries over the past three years, the improvement is evident, but there's still a long road ahead. I can talk. My mouth is better. My, my voice is better. I can eat like better so thank god alhamdulillah and it's also ramadan so it's definitely a month of blessings nafia's parents are frustrated they feel police have moved on from solving the case we strongly believe that nasa police department did not do their job in the beginning I never said it, I'm saying it today. Nassau County Police Commissioner Patrick Ryder shared a statement saying that this investigation continues to remain open and ongoing as we will not rest until the persons responsible are apprehended. Also adding that Nassau County Police and its partners have increased the reward to $50,000 for anyone with information. So, you ought to wonder what the, what, what the hell is wrong with people? What the hell is wrong with people? Yeah, nanotechnology. I do have several videos on my Rumble channel, Never Lose Truth. The nanotechnology is absolutely in use for weather control and creation. Wow. And Long Beach apartment resident terrorizes complex. All right, we've got a lot of crazy people. And, well, the police just don't seem to get anything under control. Hmm. Complex are frustrated and afraid tonight. They say a man living there has been terrorizing their community with violent behavior, including smashing windows. KCAL News reporter Lori Perez live in Long Beach tonight where Lori neighbors say police and a restraining order aren't deterring this man. That is absolutely right. Unfortunately, Long Beach police have been there so many times. They are regulars. They've been there many, many times over the last year. But even with their help, neighbors are at a loss of how to fix this really horrible situation. You're about to see we are blurring the face of the man at the heart of this and not naming him because as of yet, we have not been able to confirm if he has been charged with any crime. Okay. Security cameras have captured the terror, angry exchanges, smashing car windows, smashing condo windows, urinating in the courtyard. For almost a year now, neighbors at this Gladys Avenue complex say they've been living in fear of the man who lives in this first floor unit. One of the previous residents who just moved away uh, a month or two ago, uh, he broke their window, he broke their car's window. Another resident, he broke the window, they repaired it. 
and he broke it again. Evidence of his violent, they believe drug-fueled behavior is clear even on his own home, where neighbors say he broke out the front windows months ago. They say he broke another neighbor's windows last week. The older woman who lives here told me she now carries a taser anytime she has to leave her home. They say the man who owns the corner condo has owned it for 20 years but just moved in last spring and since then has held the building captive with his terrifying behavior. So much so the residents from four of the 16 units have moved out, including David, who is packing up today. He's, he screams like a child in there, obscenities, uh, really bad words. Um, he's threatened us a bunch of times. It's just, it's just like a really toxic environment. The man did not answer when we knocked on his door. Neighbors say after almost every incident, the police respond and take him, but he comes back hours later. The HOA has fined him, but he pays the fines, and so their nightmare continues. He hasn't physically hurt anyone yet, but they worry that is next. At the end of the day, I don't think anybody that lives here is going to feel safe until he's gone. They can't, like, arrest this guy. He's busting out windows in cars and other people's apartments and turning, well, it, it certainly is a violation of uh, the other tenant's right to live in peace. Um, so many people are really screwing up other people's lives. And they can't seem to be stopped. Isn't that interesting? And here, multiple deadly Stockton shootings. I mean, wow. I don't know how much you guys just do searches. You don't even have to do particular searches for shootings or whatever. On my... Um, homepage, I'm like, holy shit, it is every day, and it's like every five videos, someone is shooting somebody, uh, and here, this is in um, California. Police are investigating at least three separate deadly shootings, all within the last 24 hours. The first was on Wood Duck Circle and Quail Lakes Drive just before one this morning. Police responded to a crash and found a man in his 20s who had been shot. He was pronounced dead on the scene. Then around 2.30 this afternoon, police responded to reports of multiple shots fired on Astor Drive near Hammer Lane. They found one man with a gunshot wound and he's expected to survive. As officers were investigating that shooting, San Joaquin County deputies told them about a vehicle possibly involved in the shooting. That driver led deputies on a chase that ended near Harding Way and California Street. One of the passengers in that vehicle had been shot. He was taken to the hospital and he later died. Police say two other female victims showed up at area hospitals. One of them is in critical condition. The other has non-life-threatening injuries. Now to the last case, which was just a short time later. Officers were conducting a welfare check at Jackson Street and Wilson Way when they found a man with a gunshot wound inside a vehicle and he was... Scene. They have spent hours searching for information about that shooter. Oh my God. So I'm going to play this if you caught it on my Never Lose Truth channel. Um, you're going to have to hear it again. This is really important. Look at the number of people just in a small area of Queens. But these squatter rights, especially in New York, probably in California as well are so, okay, n we shouldn't be having squatting. The, it, it's called breaking an entry. They should be arrested and put in jail. It's a criminal offense that these governments have decided to make a criminal offense lawful that should beg questions, and everybody should be outraged. And New Yorkers, you need to stand up. And, well, in Florida, DeSantis just said squatting, no rights. No, 
No more squatting. Hello, New Yorkers. I thought you were smarter. Pay the upkeep of the house. Right. I pay the and you're not getting any rent? I'm not getting any rent, and I'm paying the uh, gas and electric every month. Four stores repeated over and over and over again by irate and often unwitting property owners. Worry lines marking their faces, who came to see Councilwoman Vicky Palladino's office desperately seeking help. Hong Chen has spent thousands trying unsuccessfully to get the squatters out of this home in Mazpath. John Sokran using his pension money for expenses on this College Point home he hoped would provide retirement income. And Susan Mascara, who has used up her savings paying for seven years of upkeep on this Bayside home she inherited from her mother. I'm in debt. My credit cards are pretty much maxed out. Some of them make me cry. All I want to do is make things better. Councilwoman Vicki Palladino says part of the solution is to change the law, which allows people to claim squatters' rights after living in a place for 30 days. She wants it changed to 180 days. They own the property and they have no rights. Okay. Vicki, I like you. And if I were still living in Bayside, I grew up in Bayside, you would be my representative, and I would have to challenge you. I would have to take you to task on, what are you, what are you kidding? You're going to change it from 30 days to 180 days, Vicki? It should be illegal for any day. Vicki, I thought, I thought you were uh, a little bit more hip. Okay. Squatter rights, oxymoron. Squatters have no rights. So why are you giving them 180 days? In other words, instead of 30 days, where a squatter can be in a, in a home in New York for 30 days, and that's it, then it, the owner has to pay <laughs> for the mortgage, the utilities, they can't shut them off. They can't change the locks. They can't, can't, can't. So Vicky wants to change it to 180 days. Well, that'll give owners a little bit more time to get the squatter out, right? Yeah, okay. No, no days. It should be illegal. What are we doing here? What are we doing? I, d I don't, okay, whatever, I, I, I'm, I'm blown away. Waters terrified this woman who lived next door to this Whitestone home, a home they took possession of. 7.30 in the morning, there'd be people on the front lawn drinking beer, smoking pot, different cars from different states showing up and then license plates being swapped. It was frightening. Marcia, you can feel the desperation from these homeowners, but this was focused, you know, the residents in Queens, but it's not specified to this borough, is it? No, it's, it's really citywide and it's all five boroughs, not just the Queens or the outer boroughs, it's Manhattan as well. My tenants only pay me one month then. They know the game. They know after 30 days, you cannot evict them. No court case should go seven years. Why can't you just change the locks? Oh, I will be arrested instantly. They turned off the hot water and then reported that they had no hot water. It's a $250 fine per day, up to $15,000, punishable by five years in jail. So here... Oh, this, this, okay. It drives me crazy that people are being put through this when if New Yorkers came together and demanded that that law be repealed and make it squatting is a criminal offense. I, 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 don't, I don't understand life anymore. It's a criminal offense. I don't care if legislators have made it lawful. It is a criminal offense that is really you know, sticking it to all of these property owners in New York, leaving them you know, just screwed with no options. Can't we unite on anything?
Can't we unite on anything? More hoarding complaints across LA County. Fairfax home we've been showing you is getting cleaned up quickly. Residents in other areas living next to horrible hoarding situations are asking, why not us? Fox News' Christina Gonzalez live in San Pedro with one such story. Christina. Yeah, where the residents are saying, bring those crews over here. Let me show you this property. And, and this is just a little bit. Let's, you can see under the tarps, there's a vehicle. There's all kinds of stuff. And if you look over here, you can see, you know, the plants growing through old chairs, the cage. I mean, obvious hoarding. This is a case that has been going on for quite some time. The owner has had several ongoing citations. It's even in a criminal court. Here, check this out. Quite a few years. Neighbors trying to figure out just how long the trash has been piling up at this San Pedro home. 20 años. 20 años. At least 20 years, says a man who lives next door, explaining that the elderly woman who owns the property was recently moved to a care facility, leaving her caretaker daughter in charge of the place. Now, the daughter's vehicle is parked out front, but she did not respond to our attempts to reach her. He says he's been begging her to at least fix the broke yard he fears is a fire hazard. And it's not just this home. There are homes in L.A. like this, and I'm sure they're all over the country. But isn't it interesting you know, that they have allowed this to go on for years? That seems a little odd to me, considering you know, all of the zoning requirements that everybody has to meet and the rules and regulations. It's all to... They allow this kind of stuff to go on because they want people to finally just get so exasperated that they move, that they get out of there. And a whole lot of people can't move. But I wouldn't want to live next to that. Okay. Rhode Island State Senator Tahira, is that how you pronounce her name? Mac promotes queer, a queer pleasure based sex ed for kids K through 12. Kindergarten through 12. This is a state senator. This is still going on. Uh, saying, focusing our attention on our young people and guaranteeing them all a quality education which includes comprehensive queer inclusive pleasure-based sexual health curriculum what are we discussing with these children we will be talking in an age-appropriate and safe space with our young people about masturbation we'll be talking about all the different ways um, that they can protect themselves from um, when if they choose and when they choose to have um, a sexual relationship with a partner whether or not that is anal sex um, or um, penetrative sex or oral sex who decides what's appropriate um, parents decide what's appropriate Against four, parents overwhelmingly do not agree that this legislation is appropriate. I never saw um, people in my community so active like since yesterday. I got so many phone calls of parents who are concerned. A lot of parents are very concerned about talking to them um, so explicit about different things. Uh, they, they don't think that the children at sixth grade are adequate to talk to them about it. I think. Did you really need to have a hearing about that? Really? K through 12. Yes, we're going to be talking about masturbation in, in a safe way. Okay, why aren't adults getting how profoundly inappropriate this is, how abusive it is. Why aren't more adults getting this? Okay.
All right. <sighs> Mom goes off on woke school board. And again, this is Black Conservative 24. And I'm going to put his link in to his channel again. Here we go. Our next speaker is Jennifer Reynolds Road. You guys can fill out a form to speak like everybody else did. All of you who are snickering over there when people are mentioning Ma'am, will you please address the board? Yeah, I'm going to address the board. I definitely am. Absolutely. Uh, less than half of these students in this school district are proficient in math, yet you want to push this type of literature to kids. I want to hear, I don't want to hear sexuality and kids in the same sentence ever again. The no child is gay. Preach. None. I don't care what you say. I don't care what any of you say sexuality and children should never ever i was exposed no and before any of you radicals out here laugh i was exposed to address sex. the board listen to me ma'am i was exposed to sex at a, at five years old and do you know what happened to me you especially because you're pushing these books you're helping i've seen your post on facebook yes and i went to school with your son do you want to know what happened to me being excused no stop i'm talking do you know what happened to me being exposed to sex at a five-year-old at five years old i was addicted to drugs i went to prison oh and yeah okay okay there's children there's children can my children pause? are in this school can please pause I, for a moment can you stop please the pause time, the time. Until they calm please down. pause the time let's please okay so i have we two have children I'm, I'm i have sorry please pause the time we we have a speaker let's please let and please continue to address the president. Thank, Thank you. God I turned my life completely around. I am a great mother today. My, my oldest graduated from Mentor High School, summa cum laude. He's at the University of Cincinnati. His third year in is being a mechanical engineer student. My second child is in kindergarten. Jazz Jennings, really? Jazz Jennings, here, I wanna play a clip for, you, for the board. Do you think that this is appropriate? Never mind that our law states that we parents have parental rights in education. That's a law. And I don't want this book in my kids' uh, my kids school. If these people want to go get their kid a book, go ahead. Here, I wanna I wanna I want you to hear Jazz Jennings, who who Jazz Jennings is. I they cover your kids' ears. Patterns. I have woken Jazz out of a dead sleep. Do you want to be? You wow. want it in the book? You can't handle it there. You can't. I'm not addressing you. You want to talk outside? We can. All right. So, nice. anyways, we uh, we don't need this in our schools. We don't need it in our schools when our kids are 50 percent not efficient and not proficient in math and in English. We need to get education back into the schools and teach them the proper subjects to go in advance and become productive members of society yep. and productive adults. The end. Our next speaker is Kim Bazan. I don't want to hear sexuality and kids in the same sentence. That's what this courageous lady said. My friends, we need Jesus. We need Jesus because evil is here. And I... Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> you need to have Jesus in mind and heart and in in practice and oh isn't the Bible yeah in, supposed to be protecting children right God doesn't like children being hurt right okay what's going on then what's going on um, but yeah I mean we need more women and men just like her more and more that clear that demanding and that 
not giving a shit about the disapproval that she's getting from the radicals. That's what we need. Whew. Texas nurse arrested after videos were found on her husband's phone of her having sex with a Great Dane. Okie dokie. William Mitchell Keene was caught following children around a Texas supermarket touching himself. When police confiscated his phone, they found very disturbing videos of his wife engaging in multiple sex acts with the family dog. Oh my God. Dozens of disturbing videos. They took away their 18-year-old, their 10-year-old, and three dogs. Charged with bestiality. This guy charged with possessing child pornography. How did people get so unbelievably messed in the head? And those friends and family, neighbors, probably thought that they were just swell people. We don't like and don't care about British values and laws. Well, there's an awful lot going on that I don't like. There's an awful lot, I'm sure, that many of my UK subscribers do not like, but you're going to come in to some other country and start talking about we don't want your law. You're going to impose your law? Hmm. And force the Muslims to take up their British values. Now, now we don't like your culture. We don't like your, your gambling and your homosexuality and your promiscuity and your man-made laws. We don't like that. We've, I think what we've got is better. We'll keep, we'll keep to that. No thanks. I think we believe that Islam is the best way of life and the Islamic way of life is the best. The Sharia is the best law. And we believe sovereignty is only for Allah. And this is why we stick firm to it. Enforce the... Ooh, now that's entitlement. That's an arrogance. And that shouldn't be happening. Former officer arrested after hidden cameras found in teen's bedroom. Are we seeing an explosion of adults abusing children and dogs? Have, I mean, I know that this kind of stuff has been going on forever, but is it now getting far worse and I have to, I have to wonder if these electromagnetic frequencies are really causing an awful lot of this. But I will say this, I think, you know, it's kind of like psychiatric medications that can render the person um, defenseless. You know, they can't restrain themselves and they, I had my own issues with that. But I do think that you're not going to, I really shouldn't say this, this is just a thought off the top of my head, that electromagnetic frequencies can bring out behaviors that you're prone to or that, you know, if you have a violence in you, if you have an inkling towards uh, pedophilia or whatever, that those frequencies can actually make people act on it. But if you don't have that within you, I don't think... I'd like to hear what you think about this, but I'm... Um, 
now I'm rethinking it. I just, I didn't know that we had so many unbelievably just sick and twisted people. And every day I get to see how sick and twisted is this country filled with very sick and twisted people. Of course, Hunter Elise joins us with details. Hunter, some of the details of this story are just too disturbing for TV. Yeah, that is exactly right, Jolene and Kevin. There is a lot that's too graphic. It all allegedly happened last week. A witness called police after a live feed of a teenager was found on that former police officer's phone. Jonathan Deal is a former police officer who served with at least three Oklahoma departments, Amber Police over a decade ago, Blanchard until 2017, and Payola until a year and a half ago. Now he's in the Cleveland County Jail after a call to police revealed a witness found Deal asleep in the garage with genitals exposed. In the garage, the witness found a phone next to Deal with camera footage of the victim laying in bed only wearing a shirt and underwear. After talking with the victim, the witness was able to confirm the video on the phone was a live feed taken from the victim's room on a camera the witness didn't know existed. Around 2 a.m., the witness tried to confront Deal. The court papers show Deal pushed his body onto the witness and wouldn't let her leave the room. As the night went on, the papers say the witness got away, but not before Deal laid on top of her to keep her from getting away. When she went to work later that morning, she called police. During the call, the witness says she was fearful Deal would kill her after threats were made in the past when Deal found out the witness was having an affair. Near the end of the report, it explains Deal has lived in the garage since 2021 and has access to the attic. It also says the witness found drill bit sized holes in the ceiling of one of the rooms in the house, directly looking over the bed. Deal is booked. Oh my God. Oh my God. What the hell? Millions of new illegal immigrants mask true state of U.S. economy. Economists are expressing concern over the increasing number of illegal immigrants in the United States who they believe are obscuring the actual condition of the jobs market and the U.S. economy. And if they're not, they're just lying about it anyway, which is what they've been doing for decades and Gaza, still alive after six months of bombing. I'm just going to play a few minutes of this and and you can listen. It's uh, nearly a 15 minute video. Bison, who has become a journalist since all of this has started. From Gaza, I'm still alive. But I can't believe that it's been six months since Israel started bombarding us. So we have been through several attacks and escalations and wars against Gaza. And since the beginning of these attacks started in uh, the last October, we thought it's the matter of days. weeks or maximum month before returning to our homes. But now, six months later, more than 32,000 Palestinians have been killed and more than 13,000 of them are children. 70% of our infrastructure, of Gaza Strip infrastructure, is destroyed. And 1.7 million people are forced to displace their homes. Everything we knew about Gaza before is disappeared, everything. Before the 7th of October, I lived in a very beautiful and comfortable apartment in Gaza City. But when my neighborhood was bombed and destroyed, I was forced to seek shelter at a Shefa hospital. I'm alive and this is surprising for me because um, the last couple of, of nights were really hard, especially after the internet and cellular connections, everything was cut up. Can you imagine that this is can you imagine that this is not a market, this is not a street, this is a, 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 um, a hospital. People are living here inside the buildings and, and in corridors and the patients' rooms. I've been there before too many 
it's it's <laughs> it could be me. <laughs> The bombing increases as well during the night. Basically, I don't have any safe place to go. In November 2023, I was among hundreds of thousands forced to risk our lives by walking south on Salah D Street. And I ended up in Khan Yunis. Hi everyone, this is Bissan. We are from the last people that evacuated the north of Gaza. Thousands are walking. You have to walk for three to four hours. Many places are bumped. Some people take an initiative uh, to distribute water and baskets for people. Hundreds of thousands of people are in tents. They don't have any place to go or in the streets. Look at us. People are without any roof. They're actually yani, getting sick day after day. There is no hygiene, there is no bathrooms for all these people, unfortunately. And of course, there is no enough food. We need a ceasefire. We need to go back to our homes. In the temporary truce, the seven days truce, Thousands of Palestinians tried to go back to the north of Gaza Strip. And when I asked them about their trial, they told me that the Israeli soldiers fired on them. The Israeli army is preventing us from going back to the north of Gaza Strip until now. All these people are going now to the north again. We are so worried about that. We are, this is so dangerous for them. People, they are feeling so sad and they're feeling that the truth is not a very important thing since they can't go back to their homes. People are coming back after the Israeli army shot them over Salah al-Din Road. In the truce, I met many families who returned to homes reduced to rubble. I'm in a building that was bombed and people here came to find anything to take it back to the shelter. Since it's a truce, it's not a ceasefire. شو هذول يا خالة؟ هذا فيجن يا خالة يا خالة هذا من أرض من على الدول والحمد لله لقيت وقلت أخذته وأفرقه على الجيران. They still distribute their food despite everything. At least 280 governmental schools and 65 honorable schools are damaged or destroyed. And in November, I met families who were living in dire conditions in the schools in the south of Gaza Strip, where Israel said it was safe. Today we're going to the honorable schools to see how the shelters are and how are the people inside the shelters, what are they suffering from, how are they living. So this is Misk, the youngest member in this class. Uh, Misk is uh, now almost two months old. And the surprising thing is that she was born in the war and she's old now. كل الأطفال الصغار بتلاقيهم فاهمين شو معنى صاروخ شو معنى قصف شو معنى كسر عبد الله أنت راسم هدول أوه. شو اللي راسمه صاروخ وبيت وبيت جاي عليه صاروخ شفت أي واحدة من هدول أنت in December Israel shifted its so-called safe zone again now to the Mawasi area so basically Israel ordered hundreds of thousands of Gazans to reallocate in a very narrow strip of land the size of an airport. How could this tiny area accommodate 2.25 million displaced Gazans? Uh, 
طبعا هذا عذاب كبير بالنسبة للوالدة يعني في النهار حار في الليل برد هذا بأثر على ضعف الطفل لكن ما كنت في المعيشة إحنا وين نلقى إحنا أطفالنا مرميين في الشوارع نفرج لين نفرج ولا عنا أكل ولا عنا شرب ولا عنا حمامات أنا مرة كبير وين أروح أصلي After 70 days of sheltering in a hospital in the south of Gaza Strip in Nasser Medical Complex, I was forced to flee again, this time further south to Rafah, where Israel pushed 1.2 million people. Merry Christmas, by the way. It's the 25th of December 2023. Uh, the world is celebrating and Bissan is evacuating. It's not the same. We're not the same, unfortunately. I'm leaving my place for the seventh time since the beginning of this genocide. I really feel so helpless. So, the first people I really want to say goodbye for them are Mahmoud, Jana, Ghina, and Amir. So, these are my friends, and we've shared like breakfast several times كل القصف اللي بيصير الايام هذا في محيط ناصر هيك بدكش تخلي لا بديش اخلي وين اطلع باولادي انا عندي سته وين اطلع فيهم i don't know if there is any word in english that describes this marmata marmata means that it's literally the hardest circumstances that we've been through since any يعني a lifetime maybe. so Yes. Israel repeatedly told us to go to the south for our safety, but those who were not dying because of bombs were getting sick and dying because of the piles of garbage accumulating all around us in Rafah. This rubbish container is on front of a maternity hospital. So a genocide does not only mean killing people, destroying their homes, displace them, kidnap their children and arrest them. It also means destroying the ways of living. All these bandages and blood and everything added to sewage water. So you can imagine how are the streets in Rafah and in the south. People are walking and living here. Food has been sold there and people are living there. This is causing infections and diseases. People are also dying because of the forced starvation. People in the north of Gaza Strip have had to eat the animal feed to survive. This is the bridge over Gaza Valley. They cut the road between the north and the south. Not all of people waiting here are evacuating from the north of Gaza. Like people now behind me baking sage for free. They are baking sage for people who are coming from the north of Gaza because the first thing that they are asking for is food before safety. I'm at the borders of Gaza City and my only dream now is to cross these borders and to go to my home and to sit there. We have all lost count of how many times we had to flee since October 7. But now Israel is talking about attacking Rafah. So no one of us will have any place to go to. The Israeli army have been telling us always to go to the south, but now there is no more south. We don't have any more south in Palestine. The south of Rafah now is in Egypt. But where to leave now? So I'm not the only one who's gonna leave Rafah either today or when the bombing uh, start or the invasion start. All these people living in the tents behind me or even in the buildings of Rafah with the relatives and friends also are going to leave or to flee. I'm gonna ask the people here in Rafah about the most random and frequent question that they are asking for themselves and each other is when bidna nruh? When bidna nruh is the Arabic meaning of where should we go? To go now to uh, the middle area, I need 1,000 shekels. And it's only a 20 minutes ride um, for more than three, $330. Leaving the place, Rafah, that we tried to get used to 
Today is the 21st of, of February. And this night, the tanks, the Israeli tanks, as you see behind me, entered the Mawasi area in Khan Yunis, where people are living in tents and caused damage انجريز ابني كمان من الساعة 8 وهم ماسكينه يضربوا فيه شاب صغير يعني لا صلاة الصبح شوف كيف هذا ضرب هذا اربع اوادم بقول احنا دولة ديمقراطية وين الديمقراطية عنهم I can show you behind me the most lovely spot that I love to sit in on Gaza's beach, Gaza city. See there? Look at this. Gaza city, my beloved city, my lovely place. Inshallah, we will back. Inshallah. Inshallah, I have an inner faith that we will get back and I'll make a video like that from Gaza city, Inshallah. We never imagined we would be spending the holy month of Ramadan in this immense sadness and pain. But despite everything, despite the suffering, we carry on. Thanks for our spirituality and steadfastness. Ramadan is the month of the gatherings, the family, the friends, the good wishes, the good times, the homes. But we are entering this Ramadan without having any of those. وانا بصراحة يعني بالحرب مش حاسين برمضان ابدا هاي رمضان وهي اجواء رمضان بالخيمة نفسي اجمع بناتي على سفرة اكل زي ما بقيت رمضان اللي فات جمعتهم فيها من اول رمضان ما اخترناهاش لحد العالم كله اذا في شعب بتحمل اللي احنا متحملينه باي ذا واي نوت ذي ذي ثينج اور ذي ايشو اوف ون داي اوف ون نايت اوف ون مونث It's the issue of half a year, six months. People are living here in these tents, in these conditions, cooking like this, not having food, not having any uh, electricity for six months. Uh, while Ramadan used to be the holy month where we are, we are so calm, we are so, um, yani feeling so good with families and eating our healthy, very delicious food. decided to just play it out because it's a very 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 good synopsis of the six months but having watched <clears throat> many of Bisson's um, videos and I know that an awful lot of other people watch whoo will it be heartbreaking if we learn no I don't even want to say it and yes Palestinians I agree Mama Rages with what you had said they're, they're, they're very kind loving people does that mean every Palestinian is but it's it is their culture on the whole, they are not a violent people. But something's wrong with the West. Yeah. Something's wrong with the West. And I include Israel as a Western country. It certainly has the mentality of the colonial West. I guess because in 1945 they they took away people's homes forcibly no, and not. brutally. That is another lie. Uh, you should you should. Well, learn how, the how is it? How is Israel, it? Would, Israel was declared war by all the Arab countries. Right, but, is, but Israel wasn't Arab empty, was lost. it? When Israel wasn't empty. There, there were people already living there, weren't they? Were by, they were all told to leave because everybody, as far all the Arabs were concerned, they thought they were going to walk over Israel and the people would have a bigger sway. Right, so and if somebody I'm, came to your house and told you to get out because somebody that needed safety needed it and you wouldn't get any compensation for that, you just had to leave, would you think that was a fair deal? 
I don't understand what you're talking. I don't, uh, that's I, I, I don't understand that argument at all. That that's the just argument you've just presented to me. A mild remark, which doesn't add anything no, to the, I, I'm, the I'm argument. I'm saying if somebody told you that somebody else had a right to your house, if somebody told me that somebody else. To, I, I don't. I don't. I don't talk in. in if you in, in had to leave, okay. Like if that. you had to leave your house because that's waffle. <laughs> If you if you had to, were forcibly removed from your house and not compensated for that because it was deemed that that land belonged to people who needed it for their safety because they had been holocausted by a completely different group of people that had nothing to do with I you, would know, you think you that are, that was you fair? You're talking nonsense again. Yet again, you compound all the lies. Um, what about the all the? Well, Anthony, the, I, the, if you're not going to answer my question, I'm sorry, I can't continue the call. <laughs> That's the kind of communication you have with people who are so about their own self that they'll say the most inane, absurd, insane things. And I guess they actually feel like they're right. Um, no, they're not. Auctioning land in occupied Palestine has become a public event in Canada, supported by politicians. We do not have to agree on every single issue. Genocide is bad, though. Again? Genocide is not an issue. It's illegal real estate events selling illegal property in the United States. Genocide is bad. It's not an issue. 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 What's taking place in the part of the world, in the Middle East, that you are concerned about? Say it. Name it. it. Gaza, in Israel, in Gaza, in Palestine, in Israel. It's heartbreaking. Every single loss of innocent life. Palestinian. It's heartbreaking. But we still want to auction off their homes and land. It's heartbreaking. Do you believe that person? Is he being sincere when he says it's heartbreaking? Oh God, we have so many people like that. Ah, the insincerity drips. And you can see it. Not only hear it. You can feel it and see it. Arab, Christian, Muslim, Jewish, Israeli is heartbreaking for everybody. This whole thing is heartbreaking. 
Oh my God, how is it that people do this? How is it? How is it that people do this? And feel okay about it. That's what is so disturbing, that they actually feel okay A four-day journey to a camp in Rafa after his whole family was killed by Israel. Gee, <clears throat> do you think he'll grow up and maybe want to join the resistance? Here, IDF ends active ground invasion. Oh, wow. Completely withdraws from southern Gaza. The headline is a bit misleading. Not complete. It is not complete. It announced that it had concluded the active invasion stage of the war, for now, while leaving open the possibility of a future new invasion of Rafa in deep southern Gaza. Um, they're maintaining one plus brigades. One plus meaning the Nahal Brigade and portions of Brigade 401. In northern and central Gaza, a top IDF official said that this change had nothing to do with United States pressure, though its timing is, well, unmistakable, coming after the IDF's disastrous mistaken killing of seven humanitarian um, aid workers and you know what that finally we heard some words but it, they amount to nothing it, it's just words spoken Biden is claiming that he's all pissed off at Netanyahu and he wants to see the IDF begin to be careful about killing civilians and at the same time he's sending well, tens of thousands of bombs over to Israel. Again. So, yeah. They're finally maybe getting that they have to regroup to strategize maybe a little bit differently, considering that the world is against Israel. The world is against Israel and the United States. And they're probably feeling that pressure, for sure. What is this? Oh. So th this is the guy. <laughs> um, it re it's it's wow. I mean, it it really reflects how pathetic this country has become. Not just the officials. Not just the leaders. But the people, we have allowed this to occur. We have. He, everything that this guy has said for decades has just been an utter lie.
I uh, was sort of raised uh, in the Puerto Rican community. I had a very close relationship with the Greek American community, for real. I am Joe Bidenopoulos. I grew up in a heavily Irish Catholic community in Scranton, Pennsylvania, and a heavily Italian Polish community. When I say I got, uh, uh, I, I, I got raised in the Black Church, he knows I'm not kidding. The Persian culture is amazing. As a student of the Persian culture, I probably uh, went to shul more than many of you. I come out of the black community. The background of my family is Irish American, not fundamentally unlike the Palestinian people. I uh, you might say raised in the, the uh, synagogues of my state. Everyone in town is either Polish or Italian. I grew up feeling self-conscious. My name didn't end in the SKI. I was raised in a neighborhood where I felt self-conscious my name didn't end in O. That's kind of how I was raised, like so many Americans of, uh, of Irish heritage. In HBCU, in your home state, Mr. President. Let me tell you, forget about it. That's right. That, that's where I got raised. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Just like rabbis synagogues, Just like rabbis, synagogues, and Jewish community centers in your hometown, and that's the tradition I got raised. Hard-working people, the middle class, the neighborhoods I got raised in. I was raised... Uh, GM. I was raised by Danny Noe. I was raised by a righteous Christian. I got raised on automobiles. That's what he's been saying throughout the years. <laughs> Why is it so hard to hold accountable liars? Why? Why, why, when you hold accountable the liars, why is it that the people who do hold accountable, uh, accountable the liars get destroyed? And I'm going to play this. This was five years ago. Okay, this was um, the the beginning of the video is at George H's funeral. But we've been listening to lie after lie after lie. The lies are exposed, and we do nothing. Those who lie. George H.W. Bush died Friday at the age of 94. The post office and other federal agencies are closed for the day. A funeral service for Bush is being held today at the Washington National Cathedral. Former presidents Barack Obama, Bill Clinton, Jimmy Carter, and Bush's son George W. Bush will attend, as will President Trump, who was not invited to speak. Former Florida Governor Jeb Bush explained why President Trump was not speaking by saying, quote, it's because we have a unique circumstance here. My brother was president, first dibs, as we used to say. Uh, a second funeral will be held on Thursday in Houston where jo uh, George H.W. Bush will be buried. Uh, well, we continue now to look back at the legacy of the 41st president. Bush only served one term uh, in the Oval Office, but the blowback from his 1991 invasion of Iraq is still being felt today. Although the Gulf War technically ended in February 1991, the U.S. war on Iraq would continue for decades, first in the form of devastating sanctions and then in the 2003 invasion launched by uh, George H.W. Bush's son, uh, George W. Bush. Thousands of U.S. troops and contractors remain in Iraq today. We look back now at a largely forgotten aspect of Bush's war in Iraq, the vast domestic propaganda campaign that occurred in the United States before the invasion began. And the reason why I'm including this is because the same propaganda machine is going on in Israel and the United States. We're hearing the same kind of lies out of Israel and the United States as we did with well, what you're about to hear. The story centers on a young Kuwaiti woman named Nayira. On October 10th, 1990, the 15-year-old girl gave riveting testimony before Congress about the horrors inside Kuwait after Iraq invaded. Mr. Chairman and members of the committee, my name is Nayira and I just came out of Kuwait. My sister 
with my five-day-old nephew traveled across the desert to safety. There was no milk available for the baby in Kuwait. They barely escaped when their car was stuck in the desert, desert sand, and help came from Saudi Arabia. I stayed behind and wanted to do something for my country. The second week after an invasion, I volunteered, volunteered at the al Hospital with 12 other women who wanted to help as well. I was the youngest volunteer. The other women were from 20 to 30 years old. While I was there, I saw the Iraqi soldiers come into the hospital with guns. They took the babies out of the incubators, took the incubators and left the children to die on the cold floor. It was horrifying. I could not help but think of my nephew. Now, Yira's testimony was rebroadcast across. From 20 to 30 years old. While I was there, I saw the Iraqi soldiers come into the hospital with guns. They took the babies out of the incubators, took the incubators, and left the children to die on the cold floor. It was horrifying. I could not help but think of my nephew. Now, Yira's testimony was rebroadcast across the country and marked a turning point in public opinion on going to war. President George H.W. Bush repeatedly cited her claims. And they had kids in incubators, and they were thrown out of the incubators so that Kuwait could be systematically dismantled. Netanyahu. They raped. They burned babies. They did this. They did that. They killed 1,200 Israelis. Actually, cut that in half. It was the IDF that killed half of those Israelis. Three months after Naira testified, President George H.W. Bush launched the invasion of Iraq. But it turned out Naira's claims weren't true. No human rights group or news outlet could confirm what she said. It also turned out Nayira was not just any Kuwaiti teenager. She was the daughter of the Kuwaiti ambassador to the United States, Saad Nasir al-Sabah. She had been coached by the public relations firm Hill & Knowlton, which was working for the Kuwaiti government. We're joined now by the journalist who first revealed Nayira's identity. I'll post the link if you want to listen to the journalist, but you know, this has been going on forever. And yeah, uh, it's unfortunate that a whole lot of people just don't really seem to care. You can see what people care about by watching what they do, not what they say. And I can't stand this world. I can't stand it. You know, it's it's just a repeat, a repeat, a re an evil repeat, an evil repeat, with so many innocent people having to suffer the consequences. Jesus. And yeah, so Biden slams Trump's fundraiser with hedge fund billionaires just a week after his fundraiser with celebrities. <laughs> oh, as we get closer to November, isn't it going to be fun? No, it really is not going to be fun. So... Um, Carol, we are not from here. What does that mean? What does that mean? 
There's so many comments that I read and I, I have no clue. I have no clue what people are even talking about. I want to see what that person was talking about. We are from heaven? Really? So you were in heaven? Were you thrown out? That's a little strange. Well, I would think that we're the grasshoppers. We are the grasshoppers. We let the ants take over. The opportunity for the ants to stand up to the grasshoppers, it's gone. Hmm. This is just temporary? I don't understand that thinking. These beliefs are just foreign to me. Um, if God created the world and created you, that means you have a purpose here on earth. A whole lot of Christians, that seems to be lost on them. Um, you're temporary, so you, you're in, a, in a, like a waiting cell until you die and go off to heaven. It's not strange, it's wonderful. All right. It is a very painful life. It didn't have to be, though. You know, again, I would say during, well, I stopped saying it because it was so hypocritical in AA when, you know, at the beginning of the meeting, we would recite the preamble at every meeting, and um, part of that was that we are not allied with any sect denomination, and then an hour or an hour and a half later, everybody would get up, hold hands, and align themselves with a denomination and say the Lord, Lord's Prayer. And I started thinking about that Lord's Prayer, the words of it. Well, God is giving instruction. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Not yours, God's will. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Gee, I think God wanted us to create heaven on earth. What happened? Well, if it's a spiritual school, I sure hope you're learning your education.
Christos, Greek for consciousness. We failed big time, big time. We fail one another, we betray one another, we betray God, you know, by refusing to do the work on ourselves to know who we are authentically. So if you believe that God created you, you've got to do an awful lot of work, awful lot of work. Got to clear up all of those issues that were, you know, thrown at you as a kid. And, and you have to understand yourself. You have to know yourself. You know, um, otherwise you don't live authentically. And didn't Jesus say, go, I never knew you? If you didn't do any of that work, that real hard self-reflective work, looking at yourself in the mirror and changing and actually, actually having Jesus within you as opposed to this external guy up in the sky that I guess is, yeah, well, <laughs> I'm remembering decades ago when people would say, oh my God, God gave me a parking space. That was in Manhattan, but, um, you know, if you believe that God is micromanaging everybody's life down here, um, Jesus had Christ consciousness. Whether myth or real, I have not cared. No other being has been presented as an example of how to live, no other example could be better. What happened? We could have had heaven on earth. We could have, but instead we have an awful lot of evil people who slap labels on themselves, they feel good about it, but they do such evil things. And when you continue to do evil things, you become evil. So, um, you know, <sighs> well, I can't beg anymore for places. I can't beg anymore. I'm really, really having a hard time now. I need to post a video explaining things so that subscribers who might be confused, I need to post and clear things up. Um, I know that. I've known it for a while and I haven't been able to do it, so... Um, not because I don't have the time, but because I don't have the oomph and I... I'm not interested in getting slammed again and again and, and again. So, um... Hopefully, by my just saying this, and it's more for myself than you, I'll be able to. Live honestly and speak honestly. You can't do that without doing that self-reflective work. That's what Jesus did. He lived honestly and spoke honestly. That's what he wants all Christians to do. Right? A whole lot don't. And it's one of the reasons we're living a nightmare. So,
help those in your community. A whole lot need help. A whole lot need help. I don't know if I said this last night, but I heard from a subscriber who said 87 dogs were brought to an animal shelter where she lives. And um, Jake, based on what I have heard from your life, you don't understand. So, um, get out there and help. You know, so many people, oh, you never provide any solutions. And we had somebody in the chat last night who was, what are we just going to be watching videos and not doing anything? It's every individual's choice whether you're going to do something and at this point clearly we're not going to get any of these agendas stopped we're not fighting the evil right okay well you can do things in your community to help one another yeah so on that note be safe and good night and good luck ciao